going to look at how Wilfred Owen uses this vital technique. What is alliteration? Well, think of tongue twist as Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. When have you um, come across it in poetry and writing generally? Why is it effective to use in poems and what are some of the moves it, it creates? Well, as we've seen with the tongue twisters, it can create a really comic mood, but it also, in Owen's poems, can create an extremely serious mood if used in certain ways. Look through the poem and underline all the examples of alliteration that you can find. What effect does the alliteration have in the poem? Right, well, press pause now and actually really look for yourself at this before I've had a go. You won't learn anything if you've actually, unless you've actually had a go yourself and then you sort of see what you think of what I say because I might have got it wrong. I haven't, but I might have. Right, what's the effect of these repeated letter sounds, particularly the K and the S in this first verse? I'm not going to do every verse for you, but you're going to get a feel for how to do this if you listen to me. Our brains ache in the merciless iced east winds that knife us. Wearily, wearied, we keep awake because the night is silent. Low drooping flares confuse our memory of the salient. Worried by silence, sentries whisper, curious, nervous, but nothing happens. Well, notice we've got the contrast here between the hissing S sound, that sibilance. Remember, repeated S sound or alliteration with the letter S is called sibilance. And the repeated K sound. And those two sounds work in contrast to create a very sinister atmosphere indeed, don't they? The hissing S and then the k, the harsh k, creating um, this kind of sense that they have to keep awake, keep awake, um, confuse. That k sound is used there to create a sense of disruption and harshness, isn't it? Um, as opposed to the kind of hissing, silent, snake-like s. The um, g and r watching we hear mad gusts tugging on the wire like twitching agonies of men among its brambles northward incessantly the flickering gunnery rumbles far off like a dull rumor of some other war what are we doing here um well the r sound um northward we have a r in north and wood too um and then the rumble um Create and then the rumor, um, creating again a sense of something building up, some sort of tension, rumbling and rumor. Okay, um, and combining the meanings of those words, we create a sense of anticipation and suspense. That's how what Sir Owen's doing here. Um, but look at the g sound, which is slightly different. Again, it's a bit like the. Um, C K sounds in the first verse, the uh, confuse. Um, here we've got gusts and gunnery. Again, this kind of harsh consonant sound, which is a bit different from the R sound, isn't it? it it's which is a bit softer. Um, and again, it's mu very similar, isn't it? The kind of shock of that word, like a kind of great gust or um, blast uh, that it, we feel it don't we and then look at the m and s sound are you beginning to get a feel for how to do this yeah because hopefully you are um i'll do this one then you're going to really have a go for yourself right um let's look at the um m sound the poignant misery of dawn begins to grow we only know war last rain soaks and clouds sag stormy dawn massing in the east 
Her melancholy army attacks once more in ranks of shivering grey, but nothing happens. So we got this m sound again. I would suggest it's quite similar to the r sound that we've had before. The building up of something, the sense of anticipation. Um, look at that brilliant use of alliteration of m in the third line. Massing dawn, massing in the east. Her melancholy army. So this dawn is building up a bit like the rumbling we had before this sense of something horrible building up and a melancholy you know that uh, again this sad melancholy means sad sad army attacks once more um, and again um, well this is something we've seen previously with um, Owen the personification of the weather as this sort of horrible um, attacking force worse than actually the enemy um, and then we have the very famous use of extreme sibilance to create a sense of the um, bullets flying in this first line sudden successive streets flights of bullets streak the silence and we can almost feel the bullets whistling past us can't we that works in real contrast between the fl that we have in the line three with sidelong flowing flakes that flock pause and renew we've got the feeling the fl sound that creates a sense of the snow falling down that creates that rhythm so uh, there's f and d here um, the d I would like to suggest creating a real sense of them dozing, being dazed, um, kind of out of almost their heads. Um, whereas the fl, which we've seen in a previous verse, the f creating a kind of sense of the falling flakes of the snow. J and d there to look at. You have a go, work out what the effect is. Hopefully you're going to get a hang of this. You kind of sound out the word in your head. Say it out aloud. Think about what the effect is and think about the word uh, and the meaning of the word in combination with the effect. The crucial thing is to say what you think the effect is. And in fact, you probably get the marks. Um, you, if you've had a go at just working out what the effect is for you, there's no exact science here. It's not like you're kind of going to get it right or wrong. If you justify your opinions correctly uh, in a kind of powerful way, then you will get them up. S and F is very noticeable in this verse. Have a go at looking at this. And F and H um, ends the uh, poem. I think the H, the H, the H sound is very important in this last verse. We've got hands and happens, half known. Um, all of that H sound emphasizing the fact that nothing is happening, is it? This kind of constant boredom, that illustration creates that kind of effect. Spring offensive, well, have a go looking at what you think the alliteration is here. Um, again, he uses it very, very powerfully, doesn't he? Um, and he uses it quite differently throughout the poem. Um, um, one, one I'd like to um, sh show you the M sound repeated here. Marvelling they stood and watched the long grass swirled by the maybreeze, murmurous with wasp and midge. Um, very interesting, compare it, isn't it, with um, exposure, where the M sound created a very sinister sense of like something awful building up. Here, the M sound creates a sense of wonder, doesn't it? Marvelling, may, murmurous, midge, this wonder of nature, the mmm, and we can almost hear the buzzing of the beautiful May day, the lovely kind of murmurous feel, and obviously that works very uh, much in contrast to what comes next in the poem. So we've got the imminent, we've got the M sound there, and the mysterious, this mmm, we're creating that drone, aren't we, from um, the alliteration sound. Um, and we've got uh, now the p tone begins to cha change here. Um, we've also we've got a sense of the um, beautiful nature, haven't we, 
um, emphasised by the buttercups and the boots, blessing their boots. Um, again, a sense of wonder like the M had done before, but now the tone becomes more sinister. With the clutch and clung to them like soaring hands. The brambles clutch and clung. So we get a sense of the kind of um, suspense of um, what is going to happen next. The B sound suddenly changes um, the mood completely here till like a cold gust thrilled the little word word at which each body and its soul be gird and tighten them for battle so b is uh, working quite similarly into the um k sound in um and g sound in exposure it suddenly creates a sense of disruption um and power here okay um it's worth kind of thinking about what the effect is of this. Um, we've got the um, juxtaposition here of upsurge and plunge, um, which uh, we've got the hell upsurging or going up at them and then plunging, um, which is something kind of thinking to think about. And we've also got a lot of alliteration in this section. Um, with the S sound being repeated, um, thousands steeped, steep and sheer space, um, and that obviously is going to um, create a sense of uh, real horror. Um, soft, sudden cups. Um, the S again, quite similar to exposure, creating this very sinister, snake-like effect. This um, hissing sound of the bullets passing the soldiers um, and the alliteration creates the rhythm here doesn't it um, where let's um, just look at this uh, last verse but what say such as from existence brink ventured but drave too swift to sink the few who rushed into the in the body to enter hell and there out fiending all its fiends and flames with superhuman in inhumanities long famous glories immemorial shames and crawling slowly back have by degrees regained cool peaceful air in wonder why speak they not of comrades that went under um i think i would really like to draw attention to the f sound um quite different from what we've seen in exposure where we remember we had the kind of snowflakes the sinister fl snowflakes flocking down on the things we've got the f sound creating a sense of tension and the horror and fire and flames of battle in um out fiending all its f fiends and f flames with superhuman inhumanities and again it's almost like a tongue twister isn't it because these fiends or devils that's what a fiend is are um, kind of trying to capture the soldiers um, uh, but the so some of the soldiers obviously out fiend the devil or um, outdo the devil by living um, you remember we've seen previous explanation that Owen is sort of creating very religious imagery here the religious imagery of hell right group the alliteration together think about how um, some of the alliteration creates suspense some creates a sense of choking or immobility or par paralysis some evokes threat and violence and anything else you can think of so think about the effects they're creating